The first lighthouse was built more than 2,000 years ago, and since then many thousands more have been constructed around the world to warn ships of shallow waters and treacherous rocks. Due to the nature of where they're positioned, things can get rather lonely and precarious for people responsible for operating the beacons, and there are countless tales of injuries, accidents, and strange happenings. From ones located in some of the most remote regions on Earth to those that attract ghost hunters from far and wide, it's time to explore the top 15 most scary lighthouses. Number 15. Snake Island Lighthouse, Brazil Around 21 miles off the coast of Sao Paulo, Brazil, there's an island where access is highly restricted because of how deadly it is. And for a long time, the only residents were those responsible for keeping the world's most dangerous lighthouse in operation. Known locally as Ilha da Camara Grande, but also as Snake Island, the 106-acre piece of land is home to the planet's most venomous species of snake, the Golden Lancehead Pit Viper. With a frightening density of one of these snakes per 11 square feet, They've developed a potent toxin that allows them to quickly catch birds before they have a chance to fly off the island to safety, and just one bite is enough to kill a human in just a few hours with excruciatingly painful symptoms. The rocky island has, for centuries, posed a serious threat to ships too, and any crew members unfortunate enough to be marooned there didn't stand much of a chance of surviving long enough to be rescued. In 1909, the decision was made to build a lighthouse there to protect the increasingly busy shipping lanes. But even with added precautions, several lighthouse workers themselves fell victim to the deadly snakes. Eventually, further investment was used to automate the lighthouse, and there are no longer any permanent human residents on Snake Island, with only the occasional maintenance worker or research team allowed to cross the strict naval cordon. Number 14. Moro Island, Santander, Spain Moro Island is an outcrop in the Bay of Biscay near to the entrance of the Bay of Santander that leads to the vibrant Spanish port city of Santander on the country's northern coast. Since the 16th century, it's been an important strategic position for naval forces, and its capture by Spanish allies in 1812 allowed their ships to fight back against the onslaught of Napoleon's army during the Peninsular War. The region is, however, prone to violent storms, so over the centuries a number of ships have fallen victim to the rocky shores of the island. A lighthouse was built there in the 1800s, and while this prevented countless ships from being wrecked, it came at significant risk for those responsible for keeping the light on. At least three lighthouse workers are known to have died as a result of the dangerous conditions on the island, including one who was swept out to sea during a storm in 1865, another who had medical emergency but couldn't be evacuated until long after he died, and a third who slipped as he exited the lighthouse and fell to his death. Normally, having two people there at any time, it was common for them to be completely isolated for months at a time because of the weather conditions, so it was fortunate for the lighthouse keepers everywhere that in 1921, the one on Moro Island was finally automated. Number 13. Point Lookout Lighthouse, Maryland Cities are often built along rivers, which give ships the perfect route to the coastline to join up with trade networks. But the places where rivers meet the ocean are renowned for featuring shallow waters and jagged rocks that can catch out even the most experienced captains. That was exactly the problem that was being faced by vessels trying to navigate the entrance of the Potomac River in Maryland, where it meets the Chesapeake Bay. And in 1825, the federal government began plans to construct a lighthouse to warn of the dangers and to also mark the entrance to the river. Finally completed in 1830, the structure underwent a number of renovations over the following decades, including the addition of a nearby hospital to treat those injured in the Civil War. It also became the site of Camp Hoffman, a prison camp that held as many as 20,000 Confederate prisoners, 3,000 of whom died due to the appalling conditions, and it's this that's believed to have left a never-ending mark on the surrounding area. Now often referred to as the most haunted lighthouse in America, there have been countless tales of strange happenings, such as objects moving and the sounds of screams and groans echoing in the wind. It's become so synonymous with the paranormal that regular ghost hunts are conducted there, and if the stories are to be believed, no one who goes on one is ever the same again. Number 12. Petit Minot, Brest, France the French coastline is renowned for its jagged rocks and unpredictable weather patterns that, over many centuries and with the fact that it's a vital route for cross-European travel and trade, have been the downfall of thousands of ships. To the west of France, there's a peninsula that juts out into the ocean. It's called Brittany, 
and even captains familiar with the waters could easily find themselves in trouble without assistance. This became even more of an issue in the 17th century when the huge Fort du Petit Menon was built to defend the strait of the water that connects the city Brest with the Atlantic Ocean, and with more than 240 cannons ensure that this wasn't a place that an enemy ship would want to accidentally venture into. French ships experienced their own problems though, so in the mid-19th century the decision was made to build a lighthouse in front of the fort to help them navigate the strait. Used to show the safe route and warn of a series of submerged rocks, it became vital for shipping in the area, but also a target for those wanting to disrupt it. Legends talk of a lighthouse keeper being kidnapped or killed to prevent the light from being operated properly, in an attempt to cause losses to the French fleet without having to fire a single weapon. Luckily now, it too is automated, and while modern ships have far better navigational aids, it's still one of the places where captains rely on precise warnings to stay safe. Number 11. St. Joseph Lighthouse, Lake Michigan The St. Joseph River runs from southern Michigan before passing through northern Indiana and reaching the southeast shore of Lake Michigan, and has for many centuries been a vitally important transport route through the region. Its terminus, where it enters the lake, is tricky to find at night or during a storm. So in the mid-19th century, the decision was made to install a series of lights to help with navigation. Eventually, a pier was constructed, with two lighthouses on it so ships could chart a direction more easily, and in the early 20th century, they were both replaced by sturdier, more resilient designs. This may seem like overkill, but it was absolutely necessary, thanks to the extreme weather conditions that can suddenly take hold there. It's not uncommon to see sea swells raise the water levels up above the pier itself, and in the right conditions, huge waves will smash up against the lighthouses, and during winter, structures can be covered in thick layer of ice. This obviously put the lighthouse keepers at great risk too, and they'd often be stranded there for days at a time before conditions settled enough for them to return to the mainland. Now they're maintained as historical monuments because ships no longer rely on them for navigation but they remain some of the most dangerous lighthouses in the world for people that are able to actually visit. Number 10. Pensacola Lighthouse The Pensacola Lighthouse, which provides a warning beacon at Pensacola Bay in Florida, is actually the third iteration of a light in the area, with the first being a light ship called the Aurora Borealis. The presence of the ship had so significantly improved the shipping in the area that a tower was built in 1825, but because it was too low to be as visible as had been built, another one was constructed in 1858, which is the one that we see today. At 150 feet or 46 meters tall, its light can be seen across the bay and mark safe passage past a sandbar. It's still relied upon and is now automated, but it is amazing that it's still standing, having been subjected to artillery fire during the Civil War, being struck by lightning on several occasions, having to endure various hurricanes over the years, and even an earthquake. While this would be enough to classify the lighthouse as dangerous, it also became known for a series of hauntings too, possibly by the souls who have suffered in its grounds. There's apparently the specter of a slave who hid there after running away from a farm, and also the spirit of a young woman who was thought to have been murdered there. After featuring on several Ghost Hunter TV shows, there are just as many people who now visit it in the hopes of seeing something paranormal for themselves as there are tourists who want to learn about its rich history. Number 9. Bishop Rock, Isles of Scilly The Isles of Scilly is a small archipelago that can be found around 28 miles off the southwest coast of England, and it just so happens to be on the edge of what has traditionally been the favorite route for crossing the Atlantic from America. It was along this path that ocean liners tried to set the Blue Ribbon transatlantic speed record but with such potential danger being posed by the islands, it was an obvious place to build a lighthouse. The only problem was that the islands don't actually provide much space that can be built on, and the light was constructed on one of the most westerly outcrops of the archipelago, which is known as Bishop Rock. In fact, to this day it holds the Guinness World Record for being the world's smallest island with a structure on it, and this posed difficulties not just for those involved in building or maintaining it, but also for those who had to live there to keep it lit. The iron lighthouse that was built in 1847 never switched on its light because it was washed away by powerful waves before it was completed, and it would be another 11 years until the one that was there today would be completed. Now featuring a helipad for easy access, people used to have to rappel from the top of the building directly into boats that were waiting below. 
Known as the most remote lighthouse in the world, it used to take days to get there by boat, so if the keepers had an accident, it was up to them to sort it out. Number 8. Strombolicchio Lighthouse, Stromboli, Italy Named after the Greek god of the winds, Aeolus, the Aeolian Islands are on the archipelago that can be found to the north of Sicily, in the Tyrrhenian Sea. As you'd expect with the position near Italy, it's a region that's historically been a popular trade route, not just for the residents of the islands themselves, but to wider regions across the Mediterranean. And because the islands are volcanic with a giant active volcano called Stromboli at the center, they're particularly jagged and have a large amount of material just beneath the surface of the water. Countless ships have been known to wreck on the islands as a result, and in 1925 a lighthouse was built on an unnamed sea stack just over a mile, or almost two kilometers from the volcano. Positioned on top of a lighthouse keeper's cottage, the light itself is 26 feet high, but because it's on the stack it reaches 187 feet above sea level. Both because of the risky climb for anyone to reach it and the ever-present possibility that it could be affected by an eruption from the nearby volcano, the Stromboligio Lighthouse immediately became one of the world's most dangerous as soon as it was complete. Luckily, however, today it's fully automated and uses solar power for all of its energy requirements. Number 7. Gibraltar Point Lighthouse, Ontario, Canada Said to be one of the oldest and most haunted buildings in Toronto, the Gibraltar Point Lighthouse was first built in 1808. It's on the Toronto Islands in Lake Ontario, and while it may have originally seemed like a relatively safe job for a lighthouse keeper, the first man to hold the role found things to be very different. John Paul Redemuller had only been the keeper for a few years when something tragic happened in 1815. Local legend tells of a group of soldiers who visited him in search of his locally famous bootleg beer, but after drinking too much of it, they became embroiled in an argument that resulted in one of the soldiers murdering Redemuller. Apparently, collectively deciding to chop up his remains and hide them to evade being charged for the crime, the story says that it was another 80 years until the evidence was finally uncovered. It's said that because of the gruesome way he was killed, the lighthouse keeper's spirit still walks the grounds of the islands and where the cottage once stood. And if you do visit on a dark, cold, rainy night like the one when the soldiers visited, you might even hear his tortured screams echoing around, making it one of the most haunted sites in this part of Canada. Number 6. La Jumente, Brittany, France Located at the most northwestern point of Brittany in France, La Jumente is the name given to a small rock that emerges from the ocean and also the lighthouse that was built on top of it. This particular part of Brittany has caught out hundreds of ships over the centuries, with its near-invisible rocky outcrops that lie just beneath the water's surface. And following the wreck of the SS Drummond Castle in 1896, which resulted in nearly 250 people losing their lives, plans were drawn up to put a lighthouse there to prevent another tragedy like it. Another 31 ships would wreck there in the following 15 years before the lighthouse was completed, and since then it's been credited with significantly improving maritime safety in the region. But because of its position, those inside the lighthouse have been subjected to some of the most extreme conditions possible. In December of 1989, for example, a particularly powerful storm front moved in from over Ireland and formed waves that measured up to 100 feet tall. They pummeled against the lighthouse, smashing windows, tearing off the entrance door, and flooded the entire interior, making it a miracle that no one lost their lives. Storms like this are common in the area, and it's because of this that the Brittany lighthouses have been automated since 1991, so no one's had to risk their safety in that way again. Number 5. La Corbière, Jersey La Corbière is the name given to the southwestern point of the island of Jersey, which is one of the Channel Islands between France and the UK. With a name that means where the crows gather, it's a notoriously dangerous coastal region that's on a vital shipping route and has been responsible for hundreds of shipwrecks. There's a rock that's just off the coast of the island and is connected during low tide by a causeway and it's there that authorities chose to build the UK's first concrete lighthouse in 1874. One of the reasons why it's such a dangerous location is because it's one of the most extreme tidal variations you'll find anywhere in the world, and even with the warnings in place, people often get caught short. The assistant keeper of the lighthouse drowned in 1946 while trying to rescue a visitor that had been trapped by the tide on the causeway, and there's now a loud alarm that activates whenever the water levels begin to rise to give people a chance to get to safety. 
Number four, Talacker Lighthouse, Wales. The Talacker Lighthouse, which is also often called the Point of Air Lighthouse, can be found on a beach on the north coast of Wales, where it was installed in 1776 to assist ships navigating between two river estuaries. With almost 250 years of history behind it, it's perhaps no surprise that the lighthouse has seen its fair share of tragedy. But the event that's made it the most famous was the death of a former lighthouse keeper who contracted a mysterious illness and had died before any assistance was sent. His spirit is still said to haunt the building, with it often being counted as one of the most haunted structures in Wales. People regularly report finding mysterious footprints in the sand nearby and seeing a strange figure wearing robes on the balcony of the lighthouse. To make things even more mysterious, psychics have been invited to explore the area several times, and despite having no prior knowledge of the site, each have claimed to have spoken to a man called Raymond, who was the keeper who died of a fever. Number 3. Peggy's Point, Nova Scotia, Canada You might well recognize Peggy's Point Lighthouse, as not only is it a rather treacherous structure, but the scenic vista that surrounds it has made it one of the most photographed scenes in Canada. Found in Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia, it was built on a granite outcrop near to the village and to the cove to mark the eastern entrance to St. Margaret's Bay. The first iteration of a light was constructed in 1868, but because of the extreme weather conditions it often has to endure, a more permanent concrete structure replaced it in 1914. Subjected to hurricanes and other powerful storms and regular powerful waves that smash up against the rocks, all it would take is one wrong step near the lighthouse and you'll be swept away. Despite this, it's become a popular tourist destination in recent decades, but even visitors on calm days have risked a safety hazard of a completely different kind. The ground floor of the lighthouse used to have its own post office with a unique lighthouse stamp that was only used for letters that were posted there. But it was forced to close in 2009 because inspectors detected a dangerous level of mold growth that if you were exposed to it for long enough, could have caused serious health complications. Number 2. Eddystone, Plymouth Sound, England Around nine miles off the coast of Cornwall in the UK, there is a series of rocks called the Eddystone Rocks that have for hundreds of years posed a serious threat to ships trying to reach the port of Plymouth or sail into the English Channel from the Atlantic. It's an extremely old formation that's been eroded by the waves for millions of years, and now the vast majority of them lie just beneath the surface, making them impossible to see for anyone passing through. The rocks pose such a problem that the first record of a lighthouse being built there dates back to 1698, but it was lost along with six men who were working there at the time, during the Great Storm of 1703. Since then, another three lighthouses have been built, the first of which burned down during a windy night, the second of which began to erode and eventually collapse, and the third built in 1878, which is present to this day. Still relied upon by all the ships that pass, the lighthouse emits two flashes every 10 seconds, along with three foghorn blasts every 62 seconds, all of which are now automated. The varied history of lighthouses on the rocks, along with the deaths of at least 20 people, make this undoubtedly one of the most dangerous light conditions in the world. Number 1. Point Bonita, San Francisco The California Gold Rush saw countless people traveling to the state in search of their own fortune. But during that time, at least 300 boats ran aground near the Golden Gate, which made it clear that a lighthouse was needed to warn of the hidden dangers. In 1855, the first lighthouse was built at Point Bonita, but because of the dense high fog that develops on the west coast, it was soon discovered that it had been built too high no one at sea could actually see the light. In 1877, it had to be moved, but the only suitable spot was a hard-to-reach location on the coast. To grant access, a 118-foot-long tunnel had to be dug by hand, but within 60 years, this had crumbled into the sea. To replace it, a wooden walkway was installed, but this too became dangerous and caused a number of injuries, so it was replaced with a metal suspension bridge. Over a few decades, this new bridge began to rust and wear away in the sea breeze and again became extremely precarious for people to cross. And despite a number of attempts to fix it, had to be closed in 2010. Now a new bridge has been built to give safe passage to the lighthouse, but after the success of all the previous ones, you have to wonder just how long it will last before it becomes a significant safety risk too. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back 
relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.